Hey everyone, Angelo here. Today I wanted to show you how to create an interactive button in Adobe InDesign. I'm going to go over how to use the object states panel again, but only this time I'm going to set two different types of actions to one button, having a picture appear in one instance and having text appear in an animated way in another. So let's get started. As you can see on my screen here, I have a set of four interactive buttons on a digital presentation that I'd like to publish online. I'm going to show you the document size that I'm working on by going to File, New, Document. I'm going to make my way to the Web tab here, click that, and I punched in 1280 pixels by 800 pixels and I've made it landscape and everything else is the same 36 pixel margin settings 12 pixel gutter settings those aren't as important in this um, in this design uh, but th that's that's the document that I'm working on that size 1280 by 800 okay so I'm gonna hit close and I just want to quickly show you how um, these interactive buttons work so I'm just gonna make my way to any of my interactive um, panels here and in the bottom left hand corner it says preview spread EPUB I'm gonna click that and this is pretty much what I'm gonna show you how to do today so I've set up buttons here travel tips foodie and you can see as I click foodie this one is highlighted if I click blogger this one will highlight but you're also noticing on the right hand side that a piece of text that corresponds with each one of these is appearing in an animated fashion. So I'll click photography, I'll go back to blog, I'll go back to travel tips. You get the idea here, okay? So this is cool if you're setting, setting up a uh, presentation slide that you want to publish online, okay? So let's get started here. I'm going to make my way down below and turn my, my guides on by hitting W. And I'm going to start by creating a rectangle frame tool or a rectangle frame and I want to make this uh, let's see here 250 pixels and I want to make the height of it 275 pixels just hit enter I'm just gonna drag out another copy by holding option that's good for now and let's create another set down below. Let's bring all of them up. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my images now. I'm gonna drag them on. And you can see they're in my cursor here. I'm gonna click one here, one here. This goes here. Oops. Just make sure you're clicking inside the frame and then click inside the frame there. And I'm going to just kind of adjust these a little bit. Grab your selection tool, collect all four together, and in your properties panel, go to opacity. You can also do it here. Is I want to set the opacity, opacity of these four to 50%. Okay. Reason being is I want one to be behind the one that actually lights up when you click the button. Okay, so it goes from 50% opacity to a full 100% when you click the button. I'm going to highlight all those, Command C, and then the easy way of doing this is just go to Edit, Paste in Place, and let's make the top four back to 100. Now with the top four, I'm going to go to my Object States panel. Again, all these interaction interactive tools can be found in Window, Interactive, and the ones we're working with today is object states, buttons and forms, and animation, okay? Open up your object states and let's click on this bottom icon here. It says convert selection to multi-state object. I'm gonna click that and you can see, if I click my states here, do you see how they're, they're lighting up on the screen? But if you notice behind the, the bottom version that we set to 50% opacity um, is, still, is still behind, okay? Now these are out of order, so I always suggest or recommend that you go ahead and rank these in order of how they are appearing on this page. So I'm going to bring state 4 up to the top, bring state 2 here, and then bring state 3 above. 
And then I'm just gonna rename these, okay? I'm gonna call this one Blogger. I'm gonna call this one Foodie, Foodie. I'm gonna call this one uh, uh, Blog, oh, that one's Blogger. Oh, this one's Travel Tip, so let's make that Travel. Travel, Foodie, Blogger, and that one's Photography. Renaming these states um, will save you a lot of headache as you're um, connecting them to buttons, okay? All right, so this is a multi-state number four. Remember that, you can rename it, but I'm just gonna leave it at multi-state four. Okay, let's go ahead and draw out a rectangle frame tool. Um, just a thin re rectangle like that. And I have a color here that I wanna set it to is this here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the type tool, drag out another frame there. And this one is gonna be called travel, actually all in caps, travel tips. And I'm just gonna make this actually maybe medium. And I'm gonna set the, um, the tracking to about, let's set it to 200 is good. Put that in there and I'm going to center that I'm going to put one under the first I'm going to highlight that and create more copies underneath each each image. And I'm just gonna change these to white. And now we're ready to add these as buttons that will trigger the first multi-state object. Okay, great, so I went ahead and grouped these buttons together, the text frame and the rectangle shape behind. I grouped them together by just going to object and group or command or control G. Reason being is if I click on it, when I create it into a button, it, it, it'll, it'll act as one unit and I can click anywhere on this shape or the text and it'll produce the same result. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the first one. Go to my buttons and forms I'm just going to tear that off. With it selected, I'm going to go to the type and select button. I want to change the, the, the name of all the buttons that I'm about to create because it'll, it'll take out the guesswork when you're actually linking them to the object states. So this one is going to be called Travel Tips Button. I want the event to be on Release or Tap. I'm going to change the action to Go to State. And I want to change this, or I want to leave this, I'm sorry, to multi-state 4. And I want to change the state, or leave the state in this instance, to travel. So you can see the little thumbnail images that corresponds with my, my images in my multi-state. I'm going to leave it at travel, and I'm just going to repeat the same steps for the other three buttons. I'm going to click foodie, create a button, change it to foodie, button, 2, action. I'm going to change it to a state. Multi-state 4 is good, but in this case I do want to change it to foodie. Let's work our way down to blogger. Click that. Button. Blogger. Button. Go to state. And change the state to blogger. Click on photography. Make that a button, call it photography button, go to state, and finally let's just change it to photography. I'm just going to preview our work here, let me zoom out, click on your EPUB preview icon, and you'll see that when I click through, they will work as I set them up. 
okay so you can see it's going to the full opacity and going to the next one and reverting back to the 50% opacity for the others now that I've done that I'm going to now link these buttons to the text that I have placed on this page here I have travel the globe I'm gonna apply I'm just gonna stack these all together chronicle the journey capture the world just gonna select them all and go up to my alignment options up here and just make sure that they are aligned vertically okay perfect okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually highlight all these and I'm going to go to my object states and I'm also gonna make that a multi-state object by clicking the icon there and you can see that because I've ranked them in order of how they appear um, actually no they're not so I gotta rank re-rank these I'm gonna put them up at the top travel the globe taste and enjoy is two and then make it like that let's go ahead and rename these just by clicking on it once and that one's going to call travel tips this one's going to be called taste and enjoy chronicle the journey and finally capture the world Again, this takes the guesswork out when you're actually um, setting up your buttons. So now that that's all set up, let's go back to our actual buttons here. Click on travel tips. And this is all gonna stay the same, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another action to this button. So it does two actions with one click. I'm gonna click the plus sign, go to a state. And in this case, I want it to go to multi-state five, which is the text. It's the body copy there. Click that. And I do want it to go to travel tips, so that's good. Click on foodie, create another state, change it to multi-state five, and then this one will be taste and enjoy. Click on blogger, click the actions, go to state, change the object to multi-state five, and change the, the state to chronicle the, jer the journey. And then finally, just click on photography, add another state to go to the state, change the object to multi-state five, and change this to capture the world. Now let's go ahead and preview it now. We should get two actions with one click. So I'm gonna click travel tips, foodie. You can see it's changing here. Click blogger click photography so they do work you can see it's doing two actions with each click it's already already you're already adding some more interactivity to enhance this digital layout as an added step I just don't want this text to appear with a click I I prefer if it came in as an animation so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this object state zoom in a bit I'm gonna put buttons and forms back Let's tear off the object states panel. And first I'm gonna click travel tips. Now I've already have it selected here, but I'm gonna go ahead and double click to drive into that selection. I'm gonna open up my animation panel. You could see that here. And I wanna choose a preset. So I want this to fly in from the bottom. Okay, do that with the other three. I'm gonna click taste and enjoy double click to drive into that selection go to your animation choose fly in from bottom let's go here double click to drive in the selection choose fly in from bottom and ideally you'd like to keep this the animations the same you don't want you don't want one coming in from the bottom one from the top I mean, because this is a, a menu, a presentation, just try to keep it as simple as you can for consistency purposes. I'm gonna click Capture the World, double click to drive into that selection, click Preset, fly in from the bottom. 
And let's go ahead and test this out now. So there's the one that already loaded on page view or page load. Click foodie, click blogger, click photography and work your way back. And you can see that all the actions on these buttons are working properly as I set them. You can play around, play around with the animation, try different things that might, might work for your layout. And, uh, but that's how you create an interactive button in Adobe InDesign. And just to publish it online, just go up here into this top right hand corner, click publish online. If this was something that you wanted to present to a client or maybe put up for your own personal use, go to publish online and then just go ahead and publish it. I'm gonna show you how it looks online. You could see it uploading. You do have some options to share it on uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter. You can email it. You can copy the URL. But let's view the document here. I'm just going to maximize that. And you can see when I page load, these still work just properly. Okay. Down below, if you wanted to embed this on a website, click these three lines in the far bottom right hand corner, click embed, and then you have your code there. Down below you have your code that you can uh, copy and paste on a uh, back end of a website as well. So there's many options when you're doing this, but that's how you create an interactive button in Adobe InDesign. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.